Well, round one of the Lone Star Showdown in basketball is going to happen tomorrow night here in Austin. Texas versus Texas A&M, and I, I couldn't be more excited about watching this game. This will be the first game I'll get to be at since the college football season has been over. And um, I really think the place could get rocking and get a lot more energy from the building than we have uh, in past games. Not just because the Aggies, that's a huge uh, reason for that. It's, one of, it's our biggest rival, one of them. Um, but also, you know, I, I was at the UCLA game, and it was it was an awesome game. We ended up pulling it out at the end. Uh, but, but, the, but the energy in the building really wasn't there. And, and I attribute that to it still being football season. And we played UCLA right after we found out about Oklahoma jumping us. And really, you know, it, people were loud, people were cheering on the team, but if you looked around the crowd, it was mostly, if you saw signs, they were all about the Big 12 championship game, about Oklahoma, about Missouri. Um, you know, Mac Brown just sat a few feet away from me during that game, and I would look at him a lot of times. They'd show the signs up on the screen. I'd look at Mac, and Mac was loving all the signs, uh, just tearing apart Oklahoma and, and, you know, talking about the BCS. But that took attention away from the team. And so when the game was over, a great game, uh, you know, US, UCLA almost got us at the end, but we pulled it out and won. We won, we're happy, but when we walked out of the building, it was still, uh, we still got jumped in football. This will be the first game that I've got to be back since the season is over with. And we can actually now, as an entire student body, as an entire fan base, focus on this team, who has a lot of high expectations this season. We've talked about that, how coming into this year, this is one of the top teams, these teams that we talk about being a Final Four team. And really haven't played up to that potential so far this year. I, I, I see it happening. I think it will happen. Um, but we got to play better. And we started that last week against Texas Tech. Now we got to keep doing that against Texas A&M. Now Texas A&M, Texas a and is a scary team in some sense. The only problem is they're playing here. And not just because Austin's a tough place to play. A&M hasn't won a road game in the Big 12 so far, and this will be their third one to play. They've only won one Big 12 game so far, beating Baylor, who I picked as uh, finishing third in the Big 12. I still think that. Um, I mean, you look at it, even though A&M beat them, Baylor's still 3-1 and one in the conference. A&M's 1-3. Um, A&M also, you know, they took OU to the wire at home, but still can pull it out. So they're playing well at home, but if you look at the game, they got beat pretty bad in Stillwater, Oklahoma State, and they got destroyed by Kansas and Lawrence uh, by 20, 73 to 53. So here's a road game. It's a rivalry game. The crowd is going to be into it. I don't see A&M hanging with Texas that long. Now, when we go to College Station, it's a whole different story. It seems like I think the past two or three years, it's been split every single year. I don't know when the last time we beat them at College Station was. And, you know, maybe that'll happen this year. The thing about A&M, though, that makes them scary, maybe not for this season, but for season to come, their whole starting lineup, except for Josh Carter, are junior and sophomores. And I don't see any of those juniors making the leap to NBA. I don't think anyone does. So they're going to have a very veteran-laden team next season. This season, I don't see it. So, Texas has got to keep the same mentality that we had last week against Texas Tech, which is do everything right and get everyone involved. You know, before the season, it was all about Abrams and James trying to take the game over, and Abrams is starting to find his shot more. thing is, he's still, like he was last season, he's been in his entire Texas career. He's been a very streaky shooter. There's times you can't stop him. No matter what you do, you can't stop him. But there's times where he will miss nine, ten threes in a row. And I remember against, um, uh, who was it? It was, it was a pre-conference game, uh, Arkansas. It was Arkansas. He only had seven points in the game. And, you know, he had three points in the first half. And, you know, that can't happen. Your star player can't be shut out and expect to win. And we've got a lot of guys on here to get the job done. The way you're going to beat Texas A&M is like you beat any other team. Get it inside and then move your way out. Get it to Dexter Pittman, who has been a great player for this season, this, this team, you know. Not just is he, is he big, and he's lost a lot of weight, which is, you know, you, if, if you're Texas man, you know the whole story about it. he came in overweight, Rick Barnes challenged him to lose weight. I think he's lost up to 60, 70 pounds, and I mean, he looks real good, especially compared to what he did uh, when he first got here to Texas. But what impressed me the most about Dexter Pittman is not just his size, but his post moves. If you watch what he does, he's smart with the basketball. He's not just a power guy who's just going to go in there and kill it, which he can do. But when he's got someone and he's backing someone down, you know he has a chance to make that shot because he, he's able to move to the, move the ball. He doesn't just go to, to the right or just to the left. He switches it up. And so feed the beast. Feed it to him, and we'll be fine. I mean, if you look at last year when we played Texas A&M in College Station, we got rolled by, by A&M. But the one guy who stepped up was Texter Pittman. He was the only guy on the team that played well that game. So just continue doing that, and then you're at home, so those outside shots are going to fall. I can't wait for the game. 
knock down the Aggies. They, I mean, like I said, they're going to go probably going to be one and four after this this week. But if they don't, you know, we'll see what happens. I do look for the Aggies next season to be much more of a factor in the Big Twelve, but not this year. So, I still say I'm still sticking with it. Texas first, Oklahoma, and then Baylor at the end of the year. I mean. Oklahoma's playing real well. We watched against them in Nebraska. Nebraska had them for a while, but then the better team won, pulling away, giving the ball to Blake Griffin as they do. So, it's a uh, – can't wait for the game tomorrow. Rivalry game. Just just for the fact that it's Texas versus Texas A&M, it's going to be fun anyways. But also, you've got to protect home court. And with the way OU is playing, we cannot drop any games we're supposed to win before that game in February against Oklahoma here in Austin. Got to keep the pressure on – keep the pressure on OU to keep winning – but got to focus on ourselves before we get to that point. Hook 'em horns, Texas fight, and let's beat the Aggies.